Hi everybody, welcome back to our Vamble series. I'm Mike and this is Sir Cedric, our 1988 Mercedes T1 Bremer, which we currently convert into an Overlander camper van. Last time I showed you the installation and wiring of our solar system. This time we want to install all other electrical components, that is a DC to DC or battery to battery charger, an inverter which also acts as an AC to DC charger, then we will install and wire all 12 volt appliances with the correct cables and fuses. All of that may sound frightening for a non-electrician, but I want to prove that it is easily possible to do DIY. And I will show you a wiring diagram which is easy to understand for normal folks and not just professionals. Our electric system has just arrived and this pallet should contain everything that we need. So let's check out what we got. Well, all of that stuff we have to get into our electric box now and uh, just a very short overview. That's our 160 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery, which is state of the art, but honestly also quite expensive. But it's worth the investment in the long run and has several advantages. Most notably, you can use nearly all of its 160 amp hour and not just half of it like with conventional batteries. This battery needs a battery management system or BMS. For that we have a Victron VE Bus BMS. A BMS is absolutely essential for the battery to prevent overcharging, overheating or draining the battery to dangerous levels. And then we want to use this Victron Orion 30 amp DC to DC charger to be able to charge the battery with our alternator while driving. That might be nice to have if we face several days of bad weather and our 300 watt solar panels don't produce enough. This is the Victron MultiPlus 800 inverter with 700 watt of continuous power and a 35 amp battery charger, which we can use on a campsite. We probably won't use this charger often, but the inverter is important for lots of devices like hair dryer or milk frother and Ta even wanted to have a rice cooker on board. For the inverter we also got the optional Victron remote control panel. For monitoring the whole system we will install a Votronic shunt together with a Votronic Jupiter control panel. It might sound strange to use a Votronic shunt for all the Victron devices and yes it is, but I don't like the design of the Victron control unit. Nevertheless, I would recommend you stick to a Victron device if all of your system is from Victron already. We will use two fuse boxes, a main one for the big fuses and a small one for the 12 volt appliances. To avoid draining the battery, we will install a Victron Smart Battery Protect, which can disconnect the loads if necessary. And we will also install a main switch so we can disconnect the system manually if we want. And then we have a lot of small stuff to sum it up, a bunch of headache ahead. The big question now is, can an ex-banker really install such a system in the van without uh, going mad, capitulating or burning the van down? Spoiler, yes, it is possible. And I will show you the wiring diagram in every detail. I already told you in my last video, I'm not an electrician. So this video is also for entertainment only. I would advise you take my wiring diagram to your trusted electrician and ask for a professional opinion before you start yourself. And of course, I would like to get your feedback, no matter if you want to criticize or endorse it. But before we start with the wiring, we have to talk about some basics, which really everyone has to understand to prevent wiring ending in a disaster with a van on fire. And these basics are choosing the right type of cable, choosing the right cross section area of the cable, choosing the right fuse, then creating a solid and durable bond. And finally, of course, knowing what to connect. First, the cable type. Cables have to be multi-strand, type FLY or FLRY, because single core cables could break in the long run due to movements in the van. Second, the cross-section area in square millimeters. 
I used various sizes between 1.5 square millimeter and 35 square millimeter and that depends on two factors. That is the maximum current measured in amps and the length of the cable. Unfortunately, we have to repeat a little bit of physics, but it's important to know one simple formula. This cross-section area in square millimeters is the amps multiplied the length of the cable two ways from your battery to the appliance and back divided 12.4. For the maximum current, you can just take the amp rating of your device plus a 20% addition in case that the voltage drops below 12 volt and the current goes up. 12.4 derives from the conductivity of copper, which is 58, and the maximum voltage drop, which we set at 2% of 10.7 volt, because lower than that, the system would shut off. Luckily, you don't have to care about these background details, just memorize the 12.4. Example, your fridge is rated at 5 amp and is 2 meter away from the battery. We add 20% to get a maximum current of 6 amp. So you have the 6 amps multiplied the 2 meter multiplied 2 times divided 12.4. That is 1.93 square millimeter. So you take the next bigger size of cable which is available. That would be a 2.5 square millimeter cable. And if you don't know the amps of your device but only the power demand, let's say 20 watt, no problem. Then you take this formula amp is watt divided volt. So you have the 20 watt divided the 12 volt is 1.66 amp and with this 1.66 amp you can then again use the formula for your cable cross section area and calculate the correct cable size. Third, the correct fuse. The fuse has to be big enough for the power demand of your device and it has to be small enough that the maximum current cannot damage your cable. So let's go back to our example with the fridge which had 6 amps. In this case the next bigger fuse would be 7.5 amps. Next is a good and solid connection. For that we need proper tools. That is such a crimping tool for small cables up to 4 square millimeter and such a big cable lug crimper for heavy duty wire lugs from 6 square millimeter upwards. This tool here is not perfect, but it's also not so expensive and does its job if you only use it for wiring your own van and not running a business. <laughs> After crimping comes a heat shrinking tube and the cable is ready to assemble. At this step, it's just important to check that the lug has good contact. Never use a washer between the lug and the contact. And finally, fifth, what to connect. This was the wiring diagram of the solar system shown in my last video. Apart from the solar panels and the MPPT solar charge controller, which we don't need for this video, you can see the Victron 160 amp hour lithium battery, a Victron VE bus battery management system and a main fuse box. Well, first of all, we need more space. And then we add a distribution block for the minus cables, which is not necessary, but it makes wiring easier. Between the distribution block and the main fuse box comes a big 35 square millimeter cable to be on the safe side. And now let's install the 30 amp DC to DC charger, our Victron Orion TR Smart. My alternator is rated at a maximum of 55 amp. So this 30 amp charger is probably the maximum it can handle. For connecting the Orion to the sort of battery of the bands, I use a 16 square millimeter cable from the in plus contact of the Orion to the plus terminal of the starter battery. Close to the starter battery, this cable gets a 40 amp fuse. The starter battery of the T1 is under the driver's seat. So I had to put a conduit with this cable under the floor already in a very early stage of the conversion. From the distribution block, a black minus cable, also 16 square millimeter, goes back to the minus terminal of the starter battery. And then we connect the Orion with the main fuse box, also using a 16 square millimeter cable from the out plus contact of the Orion to a plus contact of the fuse box. 
to protect this cable we use a 40 amp fuse. And then we connect the G- minus contact of the Orion with the minus distribution block. To prevent any overcharging of the battery we connect the Orion also with the BMS using a yellow 1.5 square millimeter cable from the remote H contact of the Orion to the charge disconnect contact of the BMS. That's the same contact which we also connected with the MPPT in the last video. And with this step the wiring of our first device, the DC to DC charger is already finished. Next we want to add a main switch so we can switch off the whole system manually. And we want to add a shunt to monitor the system. This Votronic Smart Shunt measures the current, that are the amps, which flow into or out of the battery at all times. And with this information the control panel can show the electric charge of the battery both in amp hours and in percent. Additionally the shunt also measures the voltage of both the starter battery and the in-cabin battery. Both the main switch and the shunt are placed in the minus cable from the main fuse box back to the battery. For measuring the voltage of the starter battery the shunt gets a 1.5 square millimeter cable from the start plus contact to the plus terminal of the starter battery. And this cable gets a 3 amp fuse for protection. Same with the in-cabin battery. Here we connect the board plus contact of the shunt with the main fuse box also using a 3 amp fuse. And next we connect the Votronic Jupiter control panel with the shunt using a data cable. The control panel also needs power so we connect it to the main fuse box with a 2.5 square millimeter cable and a 3 amp fuse. Wiring of the shunt and the control panel is then finished. So let's check out the Jupiter display now. With this button I can select the battery, either the in-cabin battery or the starter battery. But for the starter battery I can only check the voltage. For the in-cabin battery I get more info. I can additionally check the current which flows in this case out of the battery at the moment. It's 1.2 amps. Then I can check the charge of the battery both in amp hours and in percent. That would be 100%. And I can check how long the battery can support the current loads that would be 120 hours. Additionally the Jupiter also shows the indoor and the outdoor temperature and it can show the level of both the freshwater tank and the wastewater tank. What it cannot show is data from the solar panels because the Votronic Jupiter cannot communicate with the Victron MPPT. So for monitoring my solar system I have to check the Victron Connect app but that's okay for me. Next comes the small fuse box for all of our 12 volt appliances. The LED lights, the 12 volt and USB sockets, the fridge and so on. Additionally we need a device which can switch off the loads in case that the battery is low. For that we have a Victron Smart Battery Protect. When the battery management system detects a low battery it sends a signal to the Smart Battery Protect which switches off all loads. And later on again of course. We connect the in terminal of the Smart Battery Protect with the plus contact of the main fuse box and the out terminal with the main plus contact of the small fuse box using a 10 square millimeter cable. To protect this cable we use a 70 amp fuse. The main minus contact of the small fuse box gets connected with the minus distribution block. For connecting the smart battery protect to the BMS we first have to remove this cable bridge. Then we can connect the right hand side remote contact with the load disconnect contact of the BMS. And the GND contact with the minus contact of the fuse box. And now we can install our 12 volt appliances, let's say an LED light with a switch. For that we run a cable from a plus contact of the fuse box to the switch and then to the light and back to a minus contact of the fuse box. Of course we also need a suitable fuse which would be a 2 amp in this case. The best method to connect cables are these connectors from Vago, called Vago 221. And I would always use such distribution boxes which you can easily access later. 
Worst case would be a loose connection hidden somewhere behind your furniture. I love those old school toggle switches, so I have one for each of my lights and all of those toggle switches are located on a central switchboard. This switchboard also contains the Votronic Jupiter, the remote control for the Autotherm diesel heater and the control panel for the Victron MultiPlus inverter. And just for show also a bunch of random LED lights. The only thing missing now is the inverter. Our Victron MultiPlus 12835 and the corresponding control panel which is called Victron Digital Multicontrol. And being 230 volt, we need one or better say two circuit breakers. I won't show the exact wiring of the inverter because doing something wrong here can cause death. And nevertheless, I did do the wiring of the inverter myself, but I had it checked by a professional before using it. What I can say is that the inverter also gets connected with the main fuse box using an ATM fuse. And it needs a connection to the BMS using a data cable to the multi-contact of the BMS and a second data cable from the remote contact of the BMS to the control panel. And with this step, the whole installation is done. I wouldn't say it's easy, but with a bit of research and preparation, it's surely possible to do yourself. But I would strongly recommend to have it checked by a professional electrician. I also had that done, of course. Okay, I have to admit this was a difficult subject today. For sure not easy to watch and follow, but also difficult for me to find the right way to explain and illustrate. Probably you are just one of a few who haven't switched off long time ago already. So thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed it, please like, share, comment and subscribe. And also maybe turn on the notification bell that you don't miss the next episode. See you next time.